Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are launching a series of videos targeted towards Grogu. Now, I'm going, this series of videos is going to be pretty much a how-to step-by-step uh, series on how to take a collectible, this is the Sideshow collectible, a collectible um, Grogu or uh, a plush doll of Grogu or the animatronic Go Grogu and turn it into a moving thing for a Mandalorian cosplay. I have the Sideshow collectible here with the bag and I want it to be more than just Grogu stuck in a bag and you know, having you walk around with just a, you know, uh, static character inside of a bag. Rather, I would rather have this uh, character be moving and look alive and, and maybe interacting a little bit. And I wanted to build it so that it was simple to use. It was cheap and, or cheaper, I should say. It's still going to be an animatronic. Uh, it's still going to require some servo motors and require some some things. For these videos, I'm going to do a full build of materials. I'm going to uh, show the Sideshow Collectible. I think the Sideshow Collectible looks the most real. Uh, you could also use the Hot Toys Collectible statue. That also looks very nice and very real. And whichever one you choose, you know, hopefully you're going to be able to take my step-by-step -step directions, my 3D files that I'm going to create for this, and uh, and all the parts that I'm going to list, like I said, I'm going to do a full build of materials for this project and give you a animatronic or give, give you the ability to make an animatronic Grogu in the bag so that as you're walking around as Mandalorian, you have a 3D animated character. This video is part one of that series. I'm going to be doing these uh, as I go here. I believe I'm going to tr I'm going to try to put them out very quickly. This is a very simple build, but I really do want it to be a bit more technical and a bit more step by step in 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 nature, so that you could follow along and you could build your own Grogu from the ground up. Take my print files, buy a Grogu, and create your own your own thing. At the end of this thing, I'm going to document how much I spent on it. So to give you a really good idea of what the rough cost of something like this will be. And, uh, and yeah, so let's get started with part one of the Grogu Mandalorian cosplay. For this build, I'm going to be using the Sideshow Collectible statue. It comes with the school cloak. It's got a really nice head, some nice hands there. I think uh, this will be a great base for creating something that looks pretty realistic. But like I said, depending on your budget, depending on what it is you're going to be doing, depending on how accurate you want this to be, you can choose something that is really, really accurate, or you could choose something that's much more toy, a plush even, and make that move. With this process, you could do that with, with any of them. First off, I have the 3D printed parts. This is going to be the main body that we're going to be using. This is going to be used for the neck motion. This is going to be used to connect the Grogu's head to the rest of the operation. I need a handful of things. Obviously, I need the head and the hands and the cloak, but I will also need uh, some armature wires. This is just aluminum quarter inch armature wire. I'm going to use a couple of parts from Servo City, the Gold Builda line of parts. I have a couple of hubs here. I have a stainless steel D shaft just so that the neck doesn't spin weird for me. I have a universal joint, a couple of small RC connector type parts, uh, two ball joints and uh, easy connectors, and then of course these two rods here. Finally, it all is uh, going to be put into motion by these three servos, and you will need a battery. 
and that's that's really about it. Oh, you also need the bag. So hopefully you have the bag to do this. But yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to disassemble Grogu, get it prepared for everything else that's going to move. Uh, this is the only part that's going to kind of be the deconstruction part of it because I have, and no matter what you're going to use, if you're using a toy or using the Hot Toys version of the statue or the Sideshow collectible version of the, of the statue, you have to deconstruct it, figure out how you're going to attach all the parts to, to it. I pretty much know what I'm going to do with the Sideshow collectible, but as I work through this, I will explain exactly what you need to actually attach the neck or the head to the rest of the body. All right, so let's get this deconstruct. The first thing first, I'm going to take off the little cloak here. That's easy enough. Well, that's going to go somewhere safe. Also, there is a little bib here that is sometimes attached to the cloak. This one, I actually cut the attachment points. We don't need the base anymore. Now it's time to take this thing apart. Basically, there's, there's screws on the back of it. I'm going to do that now. So there's screws on the back here that have to come off. Okay, so we got all the screws out of it. Now just need to pry without arming the head here. We just need, there we go. <laughs> that did it. So we got screwdriver into this side, screwdriver into this side, the body, and that usually pop the head out. We have the head. There's a little bit of foam in there that we're going to actually cut out, and we're going to do all that a little bit later on. Right now, I just wanted to get the head off the body. Now I got to get the hands off. Let's try this little handsaw I have and see if this thing's going to cut like butter. So that's one hand there. Cut the other hand here. There we have it. We no longer need this part. While we were deconstructing Grogu, I was printing the three parts that I need. There's the main body, the servo holder for the neck movements, the part that will attach to the base of the head. All three of these parts can be found on printables for free. Link in the description. So it's a 440 screw, 440 tap. It allows the screw to thread right into the plastic. You could use a self-tapping screw, I suppose, and just do it that way as well. I think that also would work just just as well. The holes are sized for the 440 tap in the print. I am simply using the tap installed in the drill to pre-tap all the holes for the 440 threads. There are two additional holes, one at each shoulder. This will be for the set screw to hold the arms. I switch to a quarter inch drill bit so that I can open the shoulder holes. So we're also gonna do the same to this one, same drill bit. This is quarter inch armature wire. 
and this is a six millimeter D-shaft. 35 kilogram servo I got off Amazon. It's uh, an off-brand. You can get a very sophisticated servo. You can buy high tech, you can buy obviously name brands. Uh, I got this one because it was inexpensive. It was cheap. I believe this thing is somewhere in the $20 range. This particular servo is going to go into the body. The way this body orient, orients is that this is the back. So where the screw is not, that's the front. It's the only, it's the only tell on the whole thing. This servo has to fit inside towards the back. So you want the, the spline here, the, the shaft, the output shaft, to be in line. It's going to be in line with this right here. These two things, we're going to want them to sit roughly like that. The servo needs to have the shaft towards the back or towards this center line right there. You don't have to worry about the wire right now. And what I'm going to do to install this servo right now is I'm going to just use some self-tapping screws. And these are number four screws. Self-tapping. And I'm just going to insert it in the hole. Again, this servo is not under, it won't be under a lot of torque or a lot of pressure. So uh, four screws like this should hold it pretty securely. Now these holes were not tapped. So I'm just putting, you could use, you could use the same type of screw for all of the servos. I just want to show you both ways. Okay, so that servo's in place. Sometimes these servos are not centered when you receive them. So you really need something like, you can use a transmitter, use something like this. You can take the servo, plug it into a receiver and turn this on and that will automatically, you know, put it on channel you know, one of these self-centering channels, and it will automatically center. Or you can use a device like I have here. This is a servo tester. It's a great, if you're going to do projects like this, it's, if you're going to work with servos at all, I suggest getting a servo, some, some sort of way to center your servos. This particular guy, character can program servos. You don't need something as fancy. There's a battery connection. There is a polarity set up, and I'm going to switch this one just to test. So this allows me to test servos. I'm going to plug in the servo here again. Be careful of the polarity of the wires. It says on here what the polarity should be. I'm just setting it to manual, and what you're going to look for is what's that servo going to do? It didn't do anything. But my dial here will turn the servo and center it. The output should be 1500. That's the center pulse, what the pulses should be for a centered servo. So I'm just going to set this to 1500, as close to 1500 as possible. 1503. I'll hit back. Now I know the servo is centered. The reason I do that is so that um, when if you if it's not centered and you assemble it, and the first time you turn it on, it's going to do something crazy. It's going to whip. All the servos are going to whip to the center position, and it could break whatever it is you just built. So that's why you want to always center your servos. 
I'm gonna stop right there. As I mentioned, this is going to be a series of videos. Really appreciate you watching. If you wanna be notified, hit that uh, subscribe button, uh, that notification bell, and it will notify you of the next video. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the very next episode.